how come I'm not feeling that connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or maybe even if I am feeling that connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I may not be considered amongst those who are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there is ghurur as well, there is deception and delusion. You could be crying in your salah, you could be reading the Qur'an, you could be fasting Mondays and Thursdays, but there are sins that are distancing you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the exact same rate and they don't come to you until the moment of your death and then they confront you at that moment or they confront you when you rise up on the day of judgment. But where is that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the mistake that we make with our major acts of worship and with our daily lives is that we only try to remedy our deficiency in worship with worship. That we see things in an isolated way and they are the entire package. And as Hajj is actually the culmination of your entire life and it connects the dots between your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your relationship with the people around you, the things that you have to disconnect from in order to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you can't do tawaf unless you enter into your ihram at the miqat, unless you change out of your state. And when you come into that state of ihram, there is a mindset before you go to the Kaaba and you make tawaf in Umrah or in Hajj, it connects it all so beautifully. And for so many of us, we treat our deficiency in worship in isolation of one another. Why is it that I can't connect when I read the Quran? Well, maybe I just need to give it more time. True, you do need to give it more time. Why is it that I can't pray more? Why is it that I feel a blockage of Qiyam al-Layl in my night prayer? Why is it that I feel that I'm not able to, to, to immerse myself in dua? Why this? Why that? And we try to treat it and remedy it within and say that's where the connection is failing. But our beings are all interconnected in this regard. And SubhanAllah, just like with Ramadan, a major act of worship, one of your pillars of Islam, your accepted Ramadan is about man lam qawla zuri minkum, whoever does not leave off false speech and acting upon that false speech, then Allah has no need of their fasting. Your fasting is salim, is preserved by your entering and exiting your fast without the intake of haram. At the spiritual level and at the physical level. Not about how much Qiyam you prayed, not about how much Qur'an you read. You could have an accepted Ramadan and maybe read a few pages of Qur'an. I'm saying that that is possible, it's not ideal, but you could go through, technically speaking, from the Hilal of Ramadan to the Hilal of Shawwal and not read the Qur'an at all on your own and you could still have an accepted Ramadan so long as you preserved yourself from those things. It's not going to be a good Ramadan, but it could be an accepted Ramadan. Likewise, Al-Hajj. What is Al-Hajj al-Mabrur? What is an accepted Hajj? La rafatha wa la fusuqa wa la jidala fil Hajj. It's about you not doing those other things. It's about you not arguing. It's about, about you not fighting. It's about you not cursing. It's about you not sinning. It's about what you're not doing as much as it is about what you are doing. And SubhanAllah, just as you have the scene of that man that I gave you, there is another scene that is seared in my mind. And I ask Allah to forgive the brother you know, who subhanAllah, you're saying لَبَيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَيْكَ لَبَيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَيْكَ And then someone comes into a tent seeking refuge from the heat. And in the middle of your talbiyah, لَبَيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَيْكَ And I thought to myself, subhanAllah, what happened here? Where is the disconnect? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. It's also a scene, it's also a reality. But maybe in his mind, it was لَبَيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَيْكَ I need to focus on my ibadah right now, I need to read my Qur'an, I need to do my du'a, this is a distraction for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts all of this as a package for us in a way that represents our lives. And as wonderful as it might seem, you know, someone actually had brought this proposition up. Imagine if Hajj was like a ticket system where, you know, everyone goes in and has the whole haram to themselves, mashallah. And then they kind of check out and then another person comes in, puts the ticket in, mashallah, no bothering whatsoever. But the reality is that Hajj is like life. You're going to have people elbow you, people push you around, people cut you off, people that are going to disturb you. That's how life is and Hajj is supposed to be a simulation of life. It's not ibadah when it's just quiet and peaceful and no one bother me and no one get in my way. That's how life is. 
Now, what does this have to do with the barriers that we might face between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Many of us have heard the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, a man complained to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi that a man complained to the Prophet sallallahu about the hardness of his heart, the Prophet sallallahu told him to caress the head of an orphan. That what will soften your heart is to treat an orphan with kindness. That's what's going to be the remedy for your heart. That man might have been thinking, why is it that I can't connect to the Qur'an? Why is it that I can't cry? Why is it that I can't do this? Why is it that I can't do that? And the Prophet ﷺ brought in a dimension that was otherwise foreign to that person. What does the opposite of that look like? And the ulama mentioned two broad categories. Two broad categories. And before I say these two broad categories, I want you to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unjust to catch you on a sin that you did not know about or to take you by surprise when you were sincerely striving without informing you why you failed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unfair. Allah is not unjust that a person does everything they know they're supposed to do and avoids everything they're told they're supposed to avoid and then finds themselves suddenly having iman snatched away from them. It's the opposite. You're striving, Allah guides you. Allah opens your eyes wider, Allah opens your heart more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets your tongue loose in du'a, lets your tongue loose in dhikr. Your striving opens doors, doesn't close doors for you. So I'll start with that. Two broad categories. Number one, muhaqqarat al is the belittling of sins. It is the thing that the Prophet ﷺ described as a man who goes and who keeps putting small branches into a fire until the fire grows and consumes him. Right? He ends up setting himself ablaze by throwing these small branches. The small sins. Muhaqqarat al Why? Because the small sins by nature go without incident in your life. Minor sins don't cause major ruptures in your life. And so it becomes easier to engage them on a consistent and regular basis. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim. Right? That over time the heart stains, 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 stains until the heart becomes completely poisoned, locked, and unable to benefit from the Quran, unable to benefit from the salah, unable to connect in dua, completely disconnected from worship. So it is muhaqqarat al dhunub Imam al-Ghazai rahimahullah mentions of the belittling of sins. Imagine taking a stone and dropping a little drop of water on the same place over and over and over again. Right? And what ends up happening? Eventually the stone will completely be destroyed. And that is the likeness of the small sins, the habitual sins, the ones that you do on a regular basis. And so that is the first broad category that a person has to look with deep introspection because minor sins are also rarely going to be called out by someone else. That's on you to look to yourself and say, what are the invisible barriers between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that even other people are really not going to note for me? The things that I regularly watch, the things that I regularly say, the things that I regularly do. What are those invisible shackles and barriers? That's something that's gonna come through your introspection, not through anybody else. You have to diagnose that for yourself. And with every age and every circumstance and every time, the nature of those sins is going to change. But shaitan knows what he's doing. He doesn't just give you khutwat, you know, your steps and your rope when you're younger and then he suddenly abandons you and doesn't pivot. Shaitan pivots to your weaknesses. He pivots to your weaknesses and gives you another rope, another trail, another way away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to disconnect you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one that the scholars mention as a broad category which is a significant one, subhanAllah, especially in this day and age, is a'rad al-nas. Doesn't really connect with people most of the time. The honor of your fellow brother or sister. Violating the honor of your fellow brother and sister is the quickest way to distance yourself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala altogether. Why do you think the Prophet sallallahu in Hajj was talking to the Sahaba and saying, you see this Kaaba? 
You see this place that you're in, this day that you're in, you see this Kaaba, what's more sacred than this? Your brother's blood, money, honor is more sacred than this Kaaba to you. Could you ever imagine yourself doing something to this Kaaba? So second category, where do we take that from? And especially when you combine it with the first category of the quote unquote minor sins, the zallat, the, the slips of the tongue. Number one, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he mentions that in al-abda la yatakallamu bil kalima, that verily a slave will say one word, one narration, la yulqi laha bala. He doesn't really consider it. I Meaning it's just something that slips. Why? Because it became a habit. I always talk like this. This is just how I talk. I don't even recognize how I talk anymore. So la yulqi laha bala wa fi riwaya la yara biha ba's. He doesn't see an issue with it. Uh, the ulama mentioned the intricacy between the two is that in the first case, it's just it's so habitual like you're not even thinking about it. You always talk like that. You talk about people, you talk in this way, you talk that way, you type this way. You just have a long tongue and you got long fingers. Always, always talking, 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 talking. The second situation, لا يرى بها بأس, is that he doesn't think it's that big of a deal and that he's justified it or she's justified it in her mind that it's okay to talk this way and that's not really going to have an effect on my spirituality or my standing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned يَنزِلُ بِهَا النَّارِ that that causes a person to fall into the fire. أَبْعَدَ مِمَّا بَيْنَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ the distance between the east and the west causes you to go face first into the fire. لا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالَ you just talk, 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 type, 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 type talk, 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 type, 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 type. Think about what you're doing. That's going to come with you holding yourself. When the Prophet ﷺ talked about the severity of riba, of interest and usury with all of its branches, the least of it being compared to zina and incest, adultery. The last thing the Prophet ﷺ says, وَإِنَّ أَرْضَ الْرِبَا عِرْضُ الْمُسْلِمِ The worst form of riba, the essence of riba, of usury, is the honor of your brother and sister your tongue being long with your brother and your sister. My beloved brothers and sisters, if you want to connect yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to strengthen your bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then leave your bad habits and leave your sins that are disconnecting you from your Lord. Don't harm others, don't usurp the wealth of others, and don't usurp the right of others. Be nice to others and help others. Treat the orphans and widows kindly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make your heart soft and it will connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember, never ever belittle your sins. Over time, these minor sins will push you further and further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will blacken your heart. So leave these minor sins and repent, purify yourself, ask Allah for forgiveness, cry to Allah, beg to Allah, turn towards Allah and become a better human being. And my beloved brothers and sisters, this is very important. Always remember not to violate the honor of your brother and sisters. Don't slander others. Don't do backbite don't just take away the honor of others try to say nice things good things about people rather than backbiting dishonoring and slandering others try to make them sound good try to make them feel good try to increase their honor in public don't be the one who takes away the honor of your brother and sister and don't justify the wrong things and wrong behaviors of yours. Don't say that I'm like this. People should follow me. People should abide by me. People should understand me. And people should take me like this. I shouldn't want to change. I don't, I don't want to change. I'm just like this. And people should accept me like this. No, this is not appropriate. You should change if you have all these bad behaviors and bad manners and bad character and conduct. Then it's time you become a better human being. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had the best character and conduct. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was a 
was sent as a mercy to the humanity he was sent as a mercy to the whole world and he had perfected his character and conduct and a majority of people in jannah will be those who have best character and conduct so become a better human being and have the best character and conduct help us build an islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description